We certainly had our fair share of headlines in 2011. Everything from record-setting snowfall to the flood that would soon follow. From the pipeline debate all the way to Nebraska moving to the Big Ten, the news certainly didn't pull any punches this year. So here is a look back at some of the top stories of 2011. In January, a fatal shooting at Millard South rocked the high school. Hundreds of parents gathered outside, clinging to their cell phones. She just said there's been shots being fired and she's, they're hiding in the food closet. 17-year-old Robert Butler killed the Millard South assistant principal and wounded the principal before taking his own life. Miss Nebraska Teresa Scanlon was crowned Miss America. The 17-year-old is the youngest Miss America in 90 years. After casting his own ballot, Mayor Jim Suttle was able to breathe a sigh of relief after not being recalled. In February, snow continued to fall, which made the 2011 winter season one of the snowiest winters yet. While people were snuggling up in their homes, the Jones brothers were serving up some tasty cupcakes on the Food Network's Cupcake Wars. In March, Omaha stars stayed in the news. American Idol contestant Tim Halperin was loved all the way to the Idol stage. He became one of the top 24 singers in the nation. The University of Nebraska Omaha announced it was cutting both the football and wrestling teams. They're dropping the two, two of our top three sports, so it just, I'm appalled by it. In April, a tornado tore up a town in Iowa. People in Mapleton were in shock as they looked around after a storm had remodeled their town. Here, right here on my extreme left, is uh, about a four foot chimney. With some hard work and support, cleanup was underway as the town of 1,000 people got back on its feet. The Storm Chasers, formerly known as the Omaha Royals, knocked it out of the ballpark with their debut at Werner Baseball Park in Papillion. In May, shareholders in Omaha's own Berkshire Hathaway met with Warren Buffett after the David Sokol scandal. The search for the next head of the company continues, with one candidate, Ajit Jain, sliding into the spotlight. Fox 42's Shelley Russell broke the story about a murder of a two-year-old girl in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Autopsy reports show Juliet was beaten to death inside this home back in July of 2008. Police confirm three adults were here when she was murdered, but not one of them has been arrested. In June, the Army Corps of Engineers released water from Gavin's Point, making the summer of 2011 a flood no one will ever forget. The Missouri River's water rose steadily throughout June as people scrambled to protect their towns from the water's path. A mandatory evacuation was issued for people in Washington County and in small Iowa towns like Hamburg. As people packed up, the floodwaters moved in. In July, thousands of volunteers helped out by filling up sandbags to be placed along homes and along the Missouri River. An Omaha City Council ruling allowed fireworks to be set off inside city limits for the first time. The Quest Center was bought by CenturyLink. In August, we documented the many struggles of the small town of Hamburg, Iowa. I don't see this town, I don't know, it's just falling apart, it seems like. A surveillance tape surfaced of police allegedly beating a man. The investigation into the incident is still ongoing. This September was kicked off with a sea of red as the Huskers played their first games in the Big Ten Conference. 2011 marked the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. People all around the metro area took the time to reflect on the tragedy. As I walked in, somebody said, the tower in New York City's been hit. I said, oh, it can't be. Our very own Nancy Drew solved the case of the hot dog statue. Fox 42's Megan McRoberts helped scrounge up some evidence as she figured out why a hot dog was sitting on a street corner in Council Bluffs. It's like someone was in it, so. Yeah. It was kind of creepy for us. Freaky. I thought it was going to eat me. In October, the body of seven-year-old Christopher Suspanic was found along the Missouri River. Christopher and his parents were murdered in 2010. His parents' bodies have not been found. The Occupy Omaha movement kick-started its protest in Omaha. Nearly 1,000 people marched in downtown Omaha in solidarity with Occupy Wall Street. 
After being underwater for most of the summer, I-29 and I-680 reopened. In November, it was a victory for anti-pipeline activists when TransCanada announced plans to reroute the pipeline around the Ogallala Aquifer. I want to start by saying this is a good day for Nebraska. Warren Buffett wrapped up November by announcing that Berkshire Hathaway was purchasing the Omaha World Herald. In December, the Council Bluff City Council took a gamble on the Mid-America Center. In a unanimous vote, the council passed on the ownership of the MAC to Harrah's Casino. Senator Ben Nelson announced he would not be running for re-election in 2012. Just in time for the holiday season, the Iraq War was declared over as the last troops made it home for the holidays. Thank you for all the heroes that are here today. God, thank you for bringing us home. Amen. It's been a long trip to get here. It's just, it's overwhelming. 